One of these men is a self-made millionaire. What is your name, please? My name is William Nickerson. What is your name, please? My name is William Nickerson. What is your name, please? My name is William Nickerson. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real William Nickerson and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Snyder. Thank you very much. Welcome once again to Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Arid Cream Deodorant, America's largest selling deodorant. Don't be half safe, be completely safe. Use Arid Cream Deodorant to be sure. Now may I introduce our panel. First, Miss Jane Meadows. Next, the gentleman I understand everyone is singing along with, Mitch Miller. Next, Miss Kitty Carlisle. And finally, Mr. Tom Poston. <laughs> panel, will you please follow along with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it? I, William Nickerson, was entirely self-supporting when I was 12 years old. For a number of years, I worked for the telephone company. When I had saved $1,000, I began investing in real estate. I was quite successful. 17 years later, I started writing a book of advice for other real estate investors. This book has been on the New York Times bestseller list for the past 14 weeks and has now sold over 100,000 copies. Its title? How I Turned $1,000 into a Million in Real Estate in My Spare Time. Signed, William Nickerson. <laughs> Panel, these three gentlemen, as you heard, all claim to be William Nickerson, self-made millionaire. Gentlemen, are you quite comfortable and ready to play our game? Thank you, we are, sir. All right, let's begin this first round of questioning with Tom Poston. Tom? Thank you, Bart. Uh, number two, it says here you made a million dollars in your spare time. Is that right? That's right. Uh, what were you doing full time, sir? Working for the... T <laughs> well, he had to get the thousand dollars someplace. Working for the telephone company. Telephone company, huh? Right. Made a million dollars. Pretty smart operator, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me if the... Uh, number three... If the Tower of Pisa had a lien on it, what would that mean? Uh, it would be time to foreclose. Ah. <laughs> Number one, up in uh, Kennebunkport, Maine, somebody sold me some waterfront property. I haven't actually seen it yet, but it's called Sunken Acres. Now, am I lucky? You ought to go working for the telephone company. <laughs> <laughs> Jane Meadows. Uh, number one, it says here that you started with $1,000. Now, what was the first thing that you did? I bought a house with $1,000. Uh, where did you buy this house? California. Where in California? In Alamo, California. Alamo, California. Number two, when property is on a beach front, when the front of the house is on the beach, how far does the owner own the land? He usually owns to the high tide mark. Uh-huh. Number three, uh, what is the second mortgage? It's the, uh, an additional mortgage put on following the first mortgage. And number one, what are the conditions under which a piece of property would be sold at auction? Conditions of which a piece of property would be sold at auction would be uh, auctioneer putting it up, getting the regular bid for it, uh, uh, highest bid, and would therefore sell it to the highest bidder. Mitch Miller. Uh, number three. When you buy a commercial building, how many years does the government give you to depreciate the cost? 20 years. Is there another kind of depreciation? There may be. A, of course, it varies somewhat from state to state, but normally a 20-year depreciation uh, uh, number for two. obsolescence. Uh, when you buy a piece of real estate and the down payment is accepted, what is the first form that both purchaser and seller sign? A contract of sale. Uh, number three, what is the royalty that the publisher is paying for the sale of your book? Fifteen percent, sir. Uh, number one, what is the 
royalty the publisher's paying for the Fifteen uh, percent on every sale of the book. Kitty Carlisle. Uh, number one, what did you do to support yourself when you were 12 years old? Oh, I uh, worked in a grocery store delivering groceries, selling newspapers, uh, mowing lawns, and many other little odds and ends. Number two, could you tell me at what age you can get working papers legally in New York State? No, I cannot. Number three, um, if I had a thousand dollars in a copy of your book, could I make a million dollars? Yes, and if you don't uh, make it in 20 years, you can get your money back. <laughs> That's fair enough. Sure. That's fair enough. I like that. Couldn't be better. Number one, when you foreclose a mortgage, or have you ever foreclosed a mortgage? No, I haven't. Number two, did you ever foreclose a mortgage? I'm the vote, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. I'm sorry. Without consultation, please mark your ballots and select, if you will, number one, number two, or number three. And, of course, the team of challengers will receive $250 for every incorrect vote. All right, panel, have you all voted? Oh. Wait a minute, Every, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Everybody Everything marked their ballot? I touted myself <coughs> off. You all set? Okay, Jane, for whom did you vote? Well, I voted for number two. Number three gave very good answers, but number two knew my uh, question about the high watermark, which I understand is correct. Okay, uh, Mitch, what about your selection? Uh, my high watermark is number three because... <laughs> He's a cool cat, and you need, uh, you need to be a cool cat to make a million dollars out of a thousand. That's all I can say. <laughs> Can't be a square and do that, can no. you? Kitty. Well, as you can see, I touted myself off number one, uh, whom I thought it was, and went to number two. He didn't know about working papers in New York, but, but I thought he was from California, yeah. so I believe it was he. Oh, what a mess. Okay. <laughs> Tom, what about your vote this time? I voted for number three because friends... He's an honest man. <laughs> His voting record is one that I'm sure you will agree we can be very proud of in our constituency. Also, he gave my cousin a job in the city. Well, never mind. That. I voted for number three, bud. Okay, thank you, Tom. And there you have it. The way we voted and the reasons why. If you're voting along with us, it's a good idea to justify it to yourself at this point. And be ready now as we check up to find out which one is a self-made millionaire. So will the real William Nickerson please stand up? It looks like the ladies and gentlemen were uh, touted off each other that time. The two girls hit that one and did it very well, too. You sure did. Number one, could you tell us your real name and what you really do, sir? My name is Meyer J. Bauer. I'm a licensed auctioneer in the city of New York. And number three, your real name, sir, and what you do? I am Walter McPeak. I am a staff editor at the National Office of the Boy Scouts of America. Well, as we check up on the score, we find that there were two incorrect votes on the part of the two gentlemen. At $250 each for a total of $500 from Arid. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed playing our game. On your way out, you'll find there's a year's supply of Rise Instant Lather for each of you. Good night and good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Tamara von Mifling. What is your name, please? My name is Tamara von Mifling. What is your name, please? My name is Tamara von Muffling. Panel again, will you follow along with your copies of this affidavit? I, Tamara von Mifling, am a baroness. Both my father and my mother are descended from nobility. I live in Bogota, Colombia, where I am employed by Avianca as an airline stewardess. I have flown over a thousand hours to both New York and Europe. In my spare time, I travel to Ecuador, Peru, Venezuela, and Panama as a sales representative. I sell caviar. Signed, Baroness Tamara von Mirfling. All set, ladies? 
Okay. Panel, you've heard three young ladies, three charming young ladies, all claim to be Baroness Tamara Van Murfling, Baroness from South America. Let's start this round of questioning with Jane Meadows. Jane? Uh, number one, I've always been confused by titles. Could you please give me a scan from the king down to Baroness, how it goes? Well, um, the king and the prince, and then comes the, uh, the king and the prince. Would you know number two? Well, you know, it isn't very important anymore, but the king, then the prince, uh, the, the princess, of course, and uh, then the count, and then come um, the lesser nobility, and among them are the, bon the barons and the baroness. Uh, number three, would you know what was in between a prince and a count? Uh, no, I'm not sure that I do. I see. Uh, number one, how did your family attain its nobility? Well, that's inherited. It's inherited. Yes. Number two, may I assume that you're German? Is that your nationality? Yes, that's right. At number... Mitch Miller. Uh, number two, what is the first order of business when you're airborne on a transcontinental trip, on a transoceanic trip? Well, you get all the passengers on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> Number three, what is the first order of business when you're airborne and all the passengers are comfortably seated? What's the first thing you do? The announcements and uh, passing chewing gum. <laughs> Number one, what is the first order of business? Oh. Well, you take a seat so that uh, when you fly, you will be able to... Stand up straight. <laughs> number, number two, uh, what is the outstanding hotel in Panama? In Panama? Well, we don't, I have never flown to Panama, so I don't know. Number three, Kitty Carla. It says I traveled to Par oh, excuse me. <laughs> it says that she travels to Panama in the affidavit. I'm sorry, excuse me. Question further, no, it's all right. Uh, where does the best caviar come from, number one? Russia. Where did it come from, number two? Well, it comes from both Russia and Persia or Iran and all over the Caspian Sea. And uh, number three, what does 16 quarterings on an escutcheon mean? How's that again? What, <laughs> well, you, you, what do 16 quarterings on an escutcheon mean? 16 quarterings? Quarterings, yes. I'll say that alone. What is a bar sinister, number one? I beg your pardon? You know more about nobility than these noble ladies. Nobility is a theater, yeah. Mitch, you ought to be getting some good song titles here. Yeah. Number two, Can you imagine that 16 <laughs> quarterings on a discussion? Man, that's cool. Meet me down first and Number play. two, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my lady. Thank you, sir. My dear knight. Number two, what is the origin, the origination of the name Tamara? Tamara is Russian. I thought it was Shakespeare. Tamara and Tamara. <laughs> uh, number three, in France, do you know how a uh, baroness is called? In France, it's still a baroness. Number two, do you happen to know? The baroness. Uh, number Depends on if you have the right phone number, I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, once again, it's time to vote, panel. Without consultation, will you kindly once more mark your ballots? And as you did before, vote for number one, number two, or number three. Okay, well, everybody voted? I haven't the vaguest idea. <laughs> Do you have any idea who it is? Get your votes in. Are you all set? Jane, for whom did yeah, you vote this particular. time? Particular. Well, I'm voting for number one as a process of elimination. I have absolutely no reason to vote for any of them. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mitch, what about you? I voted for three by eliminating number one. Uh, and she looks like a baroness number three. Yes. Okay. How about your vote, Kitty? I voted for number two. They all look like baronesses, but they didn't any of them have any no. answers. <laughs> and Tom? I voted for Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> <laughs> Because of all those ladies, I played in operettas, I think. <laughs> 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 the 
I did uh, read you're the only one two. with a properly quartered escutcheon. <laughs> Sixteen. I voted for number two. There it is. And uh, I don't believe she was telling the truth, but I like the way she lies. <laughs> Once again, as we finish a game, and let's see if you're playing along with us, check up as we now find out which one of these three ladies is the real Baroness from South America. So will the real Baroness Tamara von Murfling please stand up? You did well on your first visit to yes. our show. Thank you very much, Baroness. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? Yes, uh, my, ne uh, my real name is Irene Bauer, and I'm a sales representative for Antoine's Van de Soleil Sun Cream. Question in just a minute, Kitty. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you do? My name is Astrid hagen -Gut. I was born in Massachusetts, and I'm an assistant to the editor of Mademoiselle Magazine. <laughs> Real quick, what's your How question? come the Baroness didn't know what came after King between King and Duke and, Pri and Baron? Prince and, uh, uh, Prince and Count. Prince and Count. The only she thing left out really, Dukes and The only thing that really Dukes. comes after the King is the Queen. So, <laughs> thank you very much for being with us. Checking on the score, we find there were one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750 from Arid. On your way out, you will find a gift package of all of Carter's fine products for each of you. Good night. Thanks for playing with us. Good luck. Now, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Stanley Einze. What is your name, please? My name is Stanley Einze. What is your name, please? My name is Stanley Einze. Panel, please listen while I read this affidavit and follow along with your copy. I, Stanley Einzig, am a professional photographer specializing in portraits and wedding pictures. My hobby is beekeeping, and frequently I am consulted on bee problems. I am the only bee expert registered with the New York Police Department. Recently, I was called upon for assistance when bees swarmed in Grand Central Station. I now keep more than 200,000 at my home. Signed, Stanley Einzig. All right, gentlemen, settle yourself comfortably and enjoy yourselves. And you heard, panel, these three gentlemen all claim to be Stanley Einzig, B expert. We'll begin this round of questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Number one, it says here that you own uh, 200,000 bees. Have you ever been bitten? Uh, no, I've never been bitten. You own 200,000 bees and you've never been bitten? No, but I have been stung many times. <laughs> My specialty is royalty, it turns out. <laughs> Number two, uh, bees can tell each other in which direction honey is to be found and exactly how to get there. How do they communicate? Well, I've never really communicated with them, and I have no way of knowing. <laughs> Number two, do you, three, do you know? Well, I believe it's through a honey dance. Uh, Number one, what is lepidoptery? Uh, to be candid with you, I don't know. That's Number two, what is a lapidary? I don't know. Number three, what is an arachnid? I don't know. Tom Poston. I don't mean an arachnid is Tom Poston. Don't misunderstand. <laughs> Tom? Yes, you're really loaded tonight, aren't you, Kitty? <laughs> <laughs> Number two, it says here that you're a consultant for bee problems. Yes. I didn't know they had any. I thought it was just milk and honey for those little things. <laughs> I guess you can imagine a little bee coming home and saying, Mommy, Mommy, I've got hives. <laughs> uh, number one, what does a portrait photographer use a jeweler's loop for? Well, that's for enlarging and uh, decreasing the size of pictures. Uh, number three, uh, can natural honey in the comb be poisonous? No, it cannot. Number two, can it be poisonous? No. Number one? No. Jane Meadows. Uh, number three, it says that bees were swarming in Grand Central Station. What were they doing in Grand Central Station? Well, 
they were waiting for a train to take them to Rochester. Oh. <laughs> you know how commuters are. <laughs> oh, number two. Who is Philippe Halsman? Philly who? Philippe Halsman. I'm sorry, I've never met him. Would you know who he is, number three? No, I would not. Would you, number one? His name is not. Um, number uh, two, uh, what is a key light? Would you know number three? Key light? A key light. That's the main light? Number one, what is a scrim? I don't know, miss. Would you know number three? A scrim? A scrim. Never heard of it, though. No. Um, number uh, one, what is the best thing to do for a bee sting? Well, the best thing to do for a bee sting is uh, put on a cold compress as soon as you can. Uh-huh. Mitch Miller. Uh, number three, what revolutionary black and white film was invented about four or five years ago? I do not know. Number two, could you answer that question? I don't know. Number th number one. I don't one. know that either. Well, what is clover honey, number three? Well, it's honey that comes from clover. <laughs> uh, you keep, it says here you keep the bees in your home. How do they get out to forage for pollen and nectar? Well, they live in hives or boxes and entrances for them to go in and out. Where are the entrances? At the base of the hive and through the hive. That's it. Once again, time to vote, panel. So will you kindly mark your ballots as you did before for number one, number two, or number three. Wow. Everybody voted? Very tough. Okay, Jane, for whom did you vote this time? Well, this is purely a hunch, I think, because he not only looks like he would keep bees, but he looks like a professional photographer to me and a portrait photographer at that, number one. Mitch, your vote. I voted for number three because uh, uh, he answered the questions pretty well, and on top of that, he looks loony enough to be both those <laughs> occupations. <laughs> Kitty, please, your selection. Well, I have a bee in my bonnet. Oh. <laughs> and I think it's number three. Number three, yes. Um, he answered the question about the honey dance. They do give a dance where they tell each other where the honey is, but I didn't ask number one that question, so it may well be number one. Do they play the top ten at this dance? <laughs> <laughs> Tom, what about your vote? I voted for number three, bud. He, he, he looks like a man who'd live in a house with 200,000 bees and a queen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you have it once again. Now, check up with us as we determine which one of these three gentlemen is the real bee expert. You think who's right, Kitty? They all think Jane is right? Okay, let's find out. Thank you very much. Will the real Stanley Einzig please stand up? you, sir, and uh, I thought you played it real well. It didn't look as though you were being stung at all. Number one, would you tell us your real name, sir, and what you really do? My name is Dr. F.D. Farabaugh, chiropractor from Flushing, Long Island. <laughs> Somehow I never thought of bees as needing adjustments at any time. <laughs> Number two, your real name, sir, and what you do? My name is Lawrence Davidson. I live in Great Neck, and I'm a baritone with the Metropolitan Opera. Do you have a 16-quarter discussion, sir? No, I haven't. You don't? <laughs> I thought all people playing those kind of parts might have them. I did. did. <laughs> all right, there we have a good score this time for the panel, but not as good for our challengers. There was only one incorrect vote at $250 from Arid, and that's the total you walk away with, gentlemen. But I do hope you had more than enough fun to make up for that. On your way out, you, you will find a year's supply of rice and some lather for you. Good night, good luck, and happy... Thank you. Raising. Good night. Good night. Well, that's about it for tonight, except, Jane, it was certainly nice having you with us for these oh, five weeks. Oh, Bud, it's been a ball. I tell you, this is the most fun I've had in a long time. Well, good. Come back again soon. Thank you. I'd love to. Next week, Polly will be back with us, returning from her rest trip through Europe, and I hope she's had a good one. And, hey, Tom, uh, Kenna Bunkport, the uh, players up there, had to let you out for tonight, didn't they? Flew me down for tonight, and uh, I'm going to fly back tomorrow, and instead of Tuesday night, when they're dark, we're going to play Sunday night at oh, the end I of the see. week. Uh -huh. What's the name of the show again? Who was that lady I saw you with? <laughs> <laughs>
Well, we let that one sink in. That's it. Good night, panel. Good night, good night. Good night. Good night. Nice having you with us tonight, too. Thank you. Good night, bud. And to all of you, this is Bud Collier saying good night on behalf of Arid Cream Deodorant and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth. A Parkinsonville Cotton Production in association with the CBS Television Network.